go fast. Uh, these are fun days. Uh, hopefully our players will, I think they truly appreciate getting with the fans and the, and the kids and the people who love it. And I think it'll be a great day for them. But uh, they need a little bit of loving after about nine day, nine practices. They're on day 10. So they think we, they, they need some friendly faces and people say some nice things to them, I think. But no, it's, it's been a good camp. Uh, Camp is going uh, as far as I think physicality. We're learning to be more physical, which I all you're always going to hear me say. Which I think in uh, this game you cannot uh, ever overestimate or underestimate. I think it's something that's a true reality of really good football teams. And I think learning how to compete, learning how to practice, that's one of the things we're learning how to do and stay physical without injuring each other as much as you can, staying off the ground and those things. But the competition's been good. A lot of new faces are. Really, you know, I think they're making progress. Been very pleased with the young guys as far as their knowledge of picking up schemes offensively, defensively, special teams wise. They're allowing them to use their athleticism because I say it's hard to ever judge a guy by how he's playing until he really learns what he's doing. These guys have done a really good job of learning. Our coach is doing a good job of teaching a lot of the older upperclassmen. You can see improvement in them, size, strength, and difference in their bodies in a year, and also knowledge of what to do and how to practice and do those things. So I think it's been a good camp so far. We've got a lot of work to do. We're nowhere close to where we need to be. And I know that sounds like coach talk, but that's the truth. That's just where we're at right now. And really starting, as I say, camp's really just now really begun, I think, in the last day or two, because you get those six, seven, eight practices in, you start getting banged, you get a little bruised up, you get a little tired. You know, you don't feel like, oh, am I getting enough sleep? And you're, well, you're in competition, so you're worried about, am I going to play? Am I not going to play? All those things, those are all part of the mental and psychological disposition you got to endure to be able to compete. And that's what we're being able to judge right now. We have a, our first scrimmage will be tomorrow night. So another good practice today, hopefully, and then we'll be ready to go. Questions? Okay. Yeah, Coach, how pleased have you been with the development of Carson Green and Dan Moore tackle now? Up, up. Much better, much better knowledge. You can see uh, recognizing things much better that can happen in, up front with whether it's a blitz game, a twist game, you know, how they're going to rush or, you know, on short yardage situation, those things. And I think they're both doing a really good job of communicating and, you know, and relaying those messages to some of the young tight ends beside them or, you know, in, in some cases like Kenya, some of those younger offensive linemen around them. But, I mean, you know, recognition up front for the offensive or, you know, getting keys that let everybody else in on what's going to happen up front because, you know, all five guys have to be in unison along with the tight end in the backs. And I think they're doing a really good job in the communication department about recognition of things, and you can see the experience. Down front, Brent. When you hire someone who has a good reputation, but maybe you don't really know them personally, is there always a little bit of a risk in that? And that being said, obviously it's worked out with Coach Elko. What have you learned about him in the past year? Well, I think, first of all, he's a relentless worker and competitor himself. I mean, I think that's first and foremost. And I mean, knowledge of the game is tremendous, but you know, when a coach, and you know, we all know a lot and we do, but I mean, he is a con he's a grinder. I mean, that's one of the things I think I truly appreciate. But he's in there figuring out different ways. And, all right, we, you know, this may be this is the way we did things. In this position here, we may have more strength here to here and how to compensate for that or how to feature another position in his defense that may be a true strength that year. I think, you're, I think he really loves ball. He, he is a very meticulous. I think he's a – like myself, I think he's very detail oriented and tries to uh, be perfect on everything and demands and has a great presence. And I think his competitive nature allows him to uh, really put, you know, produce good defense. And I think you know, his knowledge of the game is, is, is excellent. But also he's willing to put in the time to work and I, does a great job putting his players by their physical skills in position to be successful. To the left, Chuck. I know changes happen gradually over time with the football team, but do you have to go back this year to where you are now and say, what are the biggest differences, what are the biggest change with this football team from, from when you were starting year one? What would that be? I, I think the psychological disposition to understanding what it takes to play at the highest level, and I think we're still getting there, but understanding the true commitment of, you no, know, we're not trying to play well, we're trying to be successful and win, and what that entitles, I think, you, you, you think, and they, well, they should know. No, you don't know. Until you go to that level. And, there, and then there's elite levels where I think we're still in the process of learning how consistent and how relevant that is. But I think we're much, much closer in that from the psychological disposition of understanding that. And once you understand that, everything else falls in place. 
I mean, it really does. It all gets back to how you, what do you know you got to do and how you got to do it to the highest level. And I think we're in that, we're, we're getting to that level. And I think that's the biggest difference in our football team. For our last season, where's Kellen at after nine practices in fall? Does he exceed your expectations? He's sitting back in the back of the room. <laughs> that's where he's at. He's right back there. <laughs> no, but, uh, you know, uh, it, it's very interesting. You know, we, we're having that conversation. As I said, I had Joe Theismann in yesterday, you know, as a speaker and just watching different things. And uh, I think Kellen is so much farther along in the, in the discussions and the things we, we talk about and able to not just learn what I'm trying to say, but com conversate and have opinions and about why, how we should do it, why we should do it, because I think he understands how we're attacking things now and what would be another good idea. And I'll say, you know something, that is, that, that could be good there. You know what I mean? I think it's, you know, it, it's, it's, for my lack of a better term, how when your children grow up, as they get older, the conversations they have with you, you know what I'm saying? And his, from a football standpoint, a psychological standpoint, I think are really good. And I think that's now allowing him to transition into putting his personality and demeanor on the other players. It's hard to do that when you're still battling for a job yourself and proving yourself. And I think so from that standpoint, he has grown tremendously. I think there's still a lot of growth because now I think there's stages you go through in the quarterback. One, I don't know what the heck's going on, but they're playing on ability. Then I, you know, I start to figure it out and I'm in that stage and I'm doing it off and on and my athleticism gets me in and out and I can, ha I can have a conversation and I can I always say I can trick coach enough to know because they don't ever, you know, if you don't ever know something, it's like you and your video, you don't want your boss to know. And I think you go in those kind of, they know just enough to have the conversation. Oh yeah, I thought that. Then I think you really start to understand, you start to have success. And then I start to you know like I think he did and really understanding why he does things, being able to physically do them and translate his abilities there. And I think there's another level that goes to a championship level that I think, you know, I think it's in the stages of where he's at of, I know it. And then there's so many little nuances of when I do this, when I do, even though that's right, that may not, there's a more, there's a better right within the situation based off where we're at. And I think that is where your truly elite guys come. And I think that's the process that he's starting to get himself to because he has, I mean, he tremendously knows what we're trying to do offensively. He understands how to attack coverage. He understands how to work that leverage to this leverage. He knows the type of throws he's got to make. He knows the toughness he's got to play with and competitiveness. And now there's, there's right and there's more right, and there's wrong and there's more wrong. And then, you know, how to, how to be aggressively intelligent in certain areas of the field where we're, I don't want to say, you know, you, you're in the red zone, for instance, to give an example, a red zone, tight zone. You, you know, you say, well, we got points, and the guy throws a pick, and you say, why does he do that? Well, if he doesn't ever try things, how's he ever going to score a touchdown? Things are tighter, quicker, faster. But at the same time, how you do that with aggressive intelligence and where you miss that and those things, I think that's where – He's really growing and understanding, and I think those are the final stages he's getting to. I've been very pleased with his progress. Uh, and I'm never, as he'll, he knows that, he'll tell you that I'm never happy. <laughs> I'm never happy with myself. I'm never happy with him. I think when I call a play, I, you know, a lot of times if it didn't work, then you, you, should, you should have been able to call something else that helped him better. I mean, I'm just as critical on myself, you know, and uh, in that in those stages. But I, I mean, he's really growing, and I think that's that's where those elite-minded people are able to take themselves. They don't take it personally and they don't take it critically. They just take it that that's where we got to go to win. And I think that's because in his heart, he's a true competitor and wants to win. And I think it's fun to watch those guys get there. And I think that's where he's trying to get to right now. So the right Gabe and then Suzanne, then we'll move to the left. Jim, yeah, what are you seeing in the battle for the backup quarterback position? Is anybody consistently starting to rise to the game? You know, I, I, they're rising each other. And I say that. I'm, and I'm anxious. We're now in the last couple of days, really in our scrim, in our, I say not scrimmages, but our practices of getting off the field and making it more game-like. Where, you know, as I say, that we've taken the pacifier out of the mouth where the coaches aren't standing around them in the drills and, you know, they go to do something, always throwing those reminders. We're getting off the field now, making them have to communicate. So I think you're just now starting to see those stages. But all guys have shown the ability to do it. All guys have shown the inconsistencies to do it. And then some days have shown the consistencies to do it. So I'm anxious to see where we go now. As I say, we take the training wheels off and back away and put them on the field because, and how they, because much of that too is going to be how, they relate to the players in the huddle, how the guys believe and who's in the huddle can take them down the field. And you can't do that until we get off the field. And I think that's the stages we're in right now. I'm not unhappy with any of it. I think they've all made really, really good progress. Now I'm anxious to see if they can do it while we're not standing behind them. Suzanne, and then it'll be Sam and Courtney wrap us up because we got coordinators. Hey Jimbo, on your running backs, do you have a, do you think you have a featured running back yet? 
Well, I mean, I think Jayshon, Jayshon is definitely our starting tailback right now. I mean, but he still has to prove that. And there's things he has to get to in a level and to play and, and play and, and do that. But right now, I think he has done that. But I've been, you know, Kabote's been back in that mix and really doing some real nice things. Cordarian and Deneric have really come on. And Isaiah has been a very talented guy in that. Baldry's done a great job at our fullback position in there blocking and, and doing some things. And then we, we can mix around. But I would say Cordarian, I mean, uh, Jayshon is out in front. But there's a considerable group of young guys behind him that have really, really unique talents, can do a lot of things. But the thing I'm excited about, all those guys can not only run, and they're, we're much bigger at that position right now. We have really good size and speed, but the ability to catch the football has also been really good. And we're, and we're for the most part, been pass blocking pretty well. Can I ask the follow-up yes, on with the running backs? In your career, do you feel, because Trevion had so many carries because he was a great back mm -hmm. last year. Is that what you want one back to get all the carries? It just depends on the team you have. I mean, I, when, I, when I had a guy named Dalvin Cook, it was hard. I mean, I had some other good guys, but man, every time I'm handing somebody else, I said, man, I could be handing that dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I think that goes in cycles. I mean, and, and where guys are in our rotation, I think, but we have to keep a rotation. I mean, there's no doubt, and you have to create experience there. And I, I've had it go both ways. For instance, we had some runs with Dalvin there. And when Dalvin was a freshman, we had Carlos Williams, who was a really good player. And in the national championship year that one year, even though Freeman was the featured back and had 1,000 some yards and over you know, 12, 14 to whatever it was, we had three backs, him, Carlos, and Wilder, all had 10 touchdowns or more, all three guys. So, I mean, different roles, different scenarios. And also, you'll have a guy who's more of a short yardage red zone back who's a bigger, powerful guy maybe or something. And what sets you're in, you know, that does – does it feature that we're in heavy sets, in other words, with a lot of tight ends and backs where a bigger back is conducive, or are we in the red zone where we think we can keep things spread out and a more elusive guy could be a factor? You know, I mean, it all depends on the scheme of the game it goes in and, and how you use them, but I do, I'm, I'm gaining a lot of confidence in our younger guys every day. I really am, and I, I think, which we have to. To the left, Sam, and then Courtney, you'll wrap us up. Jimbo, what kind of impression has Kenyon Green made since he's been here? Done really well. And I, I think, you know, he's, he's mixed in and run with the ones right now at times. And uh, right now he's doing that inside a guard. We move some guys around in there. and uh, But very powerful, very athletic. And, again, a very – most guys, like I say, and this has nothing to do with intelligence. Don't get me wrong here. A lot of you young guys that have ability, the ability to learn and figure out the position quickly allows them to play. And he's doing a really good job of that mentally. And he's a very – he's a mature kid above his age in that – he deals with success and failure really well for a young man. And, you know, sometimes you get frustrated as a kid. You know, you feel the pressure and you want to do well and you have success. You feel real good about yourself because you should and because you're wanting to show confidence. And when you fail, you don't go in the tank. He's pretty even keeled for a guy his age and how he's competing. And, and not only, but he is a very talented guy and, and playing really well, I think, right now for where he's at. Courtney, was that your question? Yeah, but I guess just following up with Sam, what's a realist, realistic expectation for him? Um, we'll see. I don't want to. I don't want to put expectations on a guy that are too high because they it can fail. But I'm just smiling. That's all I'm going to say. I'm smiling. <laughs> he, he's got a chance to be a really good player, and and but we got to let him be. You know, see how he does when, as I say, the training wheels come off and we get away, and the other things go on. But been extremely pleased where he's at, and he will definitely should help us drastically this year, tremendously. Coach, thanks. We got Coach. Dick.